Oh, is it watering right now? Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? Okay, hold on. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we've got some planting to do. We've got some denim and lace Russian sage looking so beautiful. We've got a spice baby viburnum, which we've already planted one this year. It's right underneath the ash tree over there in the kind of a shady spot. And this is going right by where we just planted the new cucurellas by the chicken coop. And then we've got some invincible sublime hydrangeas to fill in an area in the south garden where I've already planted three but I just kind of want them to be planted in mass in this spot. So we're gonna work on that today. And it's already been a very productive day. In fact, you just saw Paul and Aaron move the last container along our east fence line. I think they just popped it over to the other side. I haven't been over there yet. I wanted to start here where it was a little quieter. So much activity though. They are putting the roof on that new build house right on the other side of our dumpster. So the nail gun's been going all morning and then Chad with his road grader and then they're using the roller right behind our barn to compact the area they've just like laid road base down so that they can put the gravel on top. Lots of stuff going on. Anyway, the pot had to be moved and the fence taken out in that one spot so that we could get the trajectory right of the lane that's going into the dirt lands. And it felt like that that little section was kind of necking it down a little bit too much. And we want everything to feel comfortable. You know, when you have got a truck and a trailer, we want all of our curves to feel like you can navigate with a trailer attached to the back of a truck. There's Douglas. And it's gorgeous. Last night it got down to 46 degrees, which seems almost a little low for us even at this point. We are popping back up into the low 90s for the next 10 days, but it's still getting down into the low 60s, high 50s at night. That's the wonderful part about high desert. And it takes almost all day to get up to that 90 degree mark. So you can really get a lot done and it's giving all the plants and us a little bit of a reprieve from the summer has been a beast. So it feels awesome. I guess maybe let's go through some of these stats really quick on these plants before we head out into the garden. I was gonna just head straight out there, but it's nicer in the shade. The denim and lace Russian sage. It's an amazing variety. It gets like 28 to 32 inches tall and about 36 inches wide, something like that. It's more of a petite version of the standard Russian sage. It doesn't um, flop like normal, it still can. Russian sage will flop due to several reasons. One, it's not getting enough sun. Two, it has too fertile a soil or three, it has too much water. It might flop in those cases. However, the larger varieties will just tend to be a little bit heavier, top heavier anyway, and will tend to want to flop. But these more compact, newer varieties are just awesome. And this is one I lean on a lot. The pollinators love it, and it just fills the gap right when it gets really crummy in the summer. It starts to bloom, and it looks awesome all the way through a hard frost. Zone four through nine on this one. And then the Spice Baby Viburnum. It's a type of Korean spice viburnum that has a very fragrant, kind of white to light pink blooms. And I love how thick and leathery these leaves are. When I come across plants like that, they just seem tough, but they still have a glossiness and that deep green, it's so beautiful. This one stays a lot more compact than the traditional Korean spice. Three and a half to five feet or so tall and about that wide. 
and it just gets a beautiful shape to it. It does need another variety of the same type of viburnum. So this is a spice baby. You could use like Spice Girl in order to have the blooms turn into berries. It needs a pollinator. I don't really care about the berries in this case. I want it to bloom in the spring and be fragrant. And if it produces berries, awesome. We do have other viburnums in the, the yard. We've got a Korean spice near the kitchen that blooms beautifully every year. And I think this is gonna be in close enough proximity. They might pollinate one another. So we'll see if we get berries. But this one is a zone four through eight and it is deer resistant for those of you who have deer pressure. In the seven and a half years that we've lived here, we've only had deer come through our property twice. So it's incredibly rare. And then we've got our Invincible Sublimes, which this one right here looks the best. <laughs> These, uh, when they came in, it was the middle of our heat wave and they all scorched and defoliated a little bit and they pushed new leaves since. So I'm thankful for that. But this is more of a, not necessarily a faith in planting. These look better than the puffer fish ones we just planted. They'll be fine, they just aren't super full. But they get these massive round, they're an arborescence or a smooth type hydrangea like the Incredibles that we have near the kitchen. They get these huge round deep lime green blooms on them which looks so peaceful. And I've got these in an area where I've got a creeping Veronica right beneath them, just like mass planted beneath them. And I thought it would just be so pretty to have this color and have a lot of it in that space. So I'm looking forward to putting these in. I wanna say these grow like three to five feet tall and wide, somewhere in that neighborhood. They do bloom on new wood though, which is nice. So if we have any kind of winter damage or if you have deer pressure or something like that come through uh, and something you know damages the wood, they will still create wood during your current season that can produce a bloom. I like that about the arborescence and paniculated type hydrangeas. All right, I think that's it for details. I think we should just get out there and get these things planted. And when I get, I think I know where all of these are gonna go. When I get to each spot, we'll talk about it. Here's the first spot where we're gonna plant the Invincible Sublime Hydrangeas. Now we planted these early on this season. They've had a little bit of a struggle, I think due to one, a ton of heat. And then we need to manage the water in this space. I think. There are some pockets that are staying a little bit too wet actually. But the Veronica, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? And this is an evergreen ground cover. So whenever we look out here in the winter time, we'll see this beautiful emerald green kind of carpet, which I think is gonna be beautiful. But you can see, I don't even know, like our hydrangeas sometimes suffer from chlorosis, but I think that they might be, they might need a little iron. And I don't know that these have been treated as regularly as some of our other things. So we could probably treat those today. I'll go grab some iron, but I think it's an overall water stress sort of situation. But this gives you a good idea as to what uh, the bloom color is. The blooms will be larger than this though, when they have a chance to kind of root in and get happy in, in this spot. Up above them, we've got some Renaissance reflection birch trees that we had three in this area. That one just snapped right in half in a windstorm this year which was such a bummer because I had a trio planted here initially. We lost the tree that was in that spot. And so I replaced it with this one. And it had been in for, I don't even know, one season, one full season, and then we lost it again. So I am kind of keeping the trunk there as a marker. Like we are gonna put another tree in here and we will limb these up as well. In fact, I could probably stand some limbing today. I need to go get a pair of Falcos and get some chelated iron real quick. But I would like to have the trio all underplanted with the hydrangeas. So my plan was to continue on this look. I'm gonna pop one, see I left a hole right in there. Pop one there, here, here, here. I just want there to be this huge bank of hydrangeas. And we do live in quite a hot climate. The hydrangeas, we typically give like an extra emitter to. Everything else is watered normally, except right here. See how wet that is? It stays way more wet on this side and we've been kind of like losing patches of the Veronica. So when we redo the drip, to include these new hydrangeas. That is a issue that I intend to address. We need to pull some of the drip out because I think uh, it's got way too much. Less on that side, that side's doing way better. So we'll get that fixed. And there's plenty of the Veronica's left to kind of fill back in. I think they'll repair. And even with as hot as we get here, these arborescent types still do really well for us so long as they get a little bit of extra water, not this much extra but a little bit extra. We just typically run a normal drip system around them and then just pop in an extra emitter. So they just get a little bit more than everything else. They are the most productive when they get at least six to eight hours of sunlight. And I think they'll still get that even with the stuff we have, like I'm standing in the shade of this tree, which is amazing that there's actually shade out here. Oh, this autumn blaze right here. Look at the shade. Oh. That's rare out here. And these will you know, be nice big trees in the end, but they'll still get sunshine um, from here in the morning and on this side in the evening. So I'm just gonna place these hydrangeas and get them in the ground.
well, go big or go home, we're gonna put in 12 today. And it's gonna be amazing. So the ones I just showed you in the back of the Gator are part of a earlier shipment that lived through our heat. And then the next batch we got in kind of defoliated completely, but they're coming back. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't intend on bringing these out. I was gonna let them lush a little bit more before I did, but you know what? We're doing the project today and I'd like to get them all in. So this whole area is just going to be absolutely stunning, I think. What I would like to do is fix the water issue so we don't have yellow Veronica. I want it to all be deep green and I would like to continue the Veronica on all the way underneath this whole sublime like mass plant. It's kind of a hedge, kind of not. I mean, it goes deep into this flower bed, but I do have a nine bark that I think I'm gonna replace. I can't even remember what variety, like Dark Star or something like that. They have not done very well in our garden. I'm thinking of coming in with like a Copertina or a Ginger Wine. We'll put that back in here so we've got some red foliage and then we'll do something different in here uh, so that from the other side of the bed, you don't really see the hydrangeas. I want it to kind of be a two-sided thing going on. And the Spurge, you guys, this weed right here, is just the worst. It just comes up everywhere and it's kind of hard to spot because it's not very brilliant green. But I'm just noticing it everywhere in this bed. And here's a view from this side. Doesn't it look better to have those birch trees limbed up a little bit? It just kind of tidies it up. And then when we do have, you know, something different in terms of nine bark variety in here, so we've got something nice big and red, you'll kind of see glimpses of the hydrangeas through, but not the whole view. So in this garden, what I would really like to have happen is, and I know it's gonna take a while because we started from nothing out here. So we've got to get some maturity on things, but eventually I would love for when you walk around like one of these stone pathways, when you make a turn to be surprised by something new. I don't want to be able to see all of it all at one time. And right now it's, you know, it's getting there. There are spots that are starting to fill in and feel very cozy. We're starting to see some shade, like some actual canopy size on some of our trees, and we'll get there. We will get there eventually. It's one of those things when you lay waste to an entire space and make it complete. I mean, this is a flat space to begin with, and it was a raw pasture when we started. So, I mean, we had just, you know, flat powder dirt out here. It just takes a minute to get there. But I think this is gonna be so amazing. And it's gonna stretch almost all the way down the pathway. It's gonna be quite perfect though, because eventually I'd like it to switch into something different. And we'll probably have some sort of situation that's arbor-esque or evergreens flanking, something like that. So, I mean, you maybe in the end could tuck one more in, but we'll transition to something else for this space. This is going to be spectacular next year. <laughs> okay, now we plant. Oh, you guys, this is going to be good. I'm so excited. So starting on this side, you can see I'm just peeking through. And you do have to also imagine that I'm going to have this pretty thickly planted too. So hopefully this is a very much so sort of an intimate walkway area, which means I'm going to have to do some kind of a thin, taller border with other things around it. But coming around the corner, hey, <laughs> Samantha came out to join us. But coming around the corner, you can see all of the new ones planted. Well, most of them you can see. Some of them look like twigs, but not for long. And I think we've got them in the ground early enough that they may push more leaves. We might have some nice full looking shrubs by the end of the season. And they definitely have enough time to root in before winter comes. So we'll work on the drip in this area, kind of correcting the amount by the Veronica. We'll add some to the hydrangeas and then we'll mulch this whole space and it's gonna look sharp. Also, I think we'll be able to divide some of these Veronica. Like some of these are getting quite large, so we can go in and take divisions and start spreading them down instead of having to buy all new ones. What are you doing, baby? I'm gonna be doing the 
you're getting the dirtiness off the seat, that's a good plan. Okay, let's go get the viburnum planted next. Also, I forgot to mention that I realized we were out of chelated iron. So I'm gonna have to go grab some and then I will treat all of the hydrangeas, the three that were previously planted and all the new ones that I planted today just as a preventative measure. Oh my goodness, this one's heavy. Must be full of water. So this is where we just planted the shadow tag hookerellas looking awesome. And I thought it would be great to have the viburnum right in here. And I've also got some beautiful hostas coming in the next couple of weeks that I thought would be beautiful to pop in here as well. So anyway, uh, let's get this positioned properly. I think right in there would be perfect. It might be beautiful to have some Hakana Cloa, the areola with the yellow variegation of a nice grassy kind of wispy texture sort of underneath this shrub. Because I mean, if it gets to the five foot end of things, it's going to create a really nice sort of visual block to keep that more of its own room. And it'll come out far enough to where maybe some larger hostas wouldn't work. I don't have to rethink the hostas now because I think a grassy texture might look perfect in here. Still, you can see we haven't addressed the uh, drip system yet in this space. We'll get there. That is an exceptionally beautiful plant right there. I don't know what it is about that variety, but I think they are so gorgeous and I think it's gonna do really well in this location. It's gonna get a little bit of filtered sun, but it's gonna be protected from the hot afternoon sun. So we should have a really beautiful plant here. I mean, it's already gorgeous, but once it fills in this space a little bit more, oh, and full of bloom, it's gonna be good. She's finding the, oh, right here, Samantha the dried catkins right here too, look. Those are fun to break apart, huh? Yeah. All right, the last things for today are the Russian sage, which are going back out into the South Garden. I don't know why I came over here before I got those done. Okay, first of all, I just wanted to stop and show you some of this denim and lace Russian sage in bloom. And these have been here for a few years and they look so amazing. So just wanted to show you kind of an example of what I'm going for. I just love how they kind of pop out from in between things. These have got closer to the border, but uh, we've got them scattered all over. We've got them also mirrored over here on this side. I've got a few right in here. I've also got some in this corner right here. So beautiful. Ugh. And there's more on the other side as well. And that's actually the direction I'm heading, I think. I mean, I, I kind of went into this project knowing where I wanted to put all of them but I keep seeing other spots where they'd be gorgeous as well. <sighs> My goodness, look at that Supertunia Vista bubblegum. Those are like a couple feet tall at this point. They're mounds, huge mounds of beautiful pink. My word. All right, so this is where I thought the denim and lace would look really pretty. We've got some of the firefly fuchsia yarrow right here alongside some of the phlox. We planted these out super duper early. The phlox kind of died all the way back and just like stayed like that for most of the season. <laughs> and they've just now reflushed and they're beautiful. We'll have to put a name on the screen for these because I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But we've also got a couple of the oh so easy ice bay roses. So they stay fairly on small white flowers. There's an Aphrodite sweet shrub right there that we planted this season. We've got some lemon squeeze uh, penicetum. We've got some echinacea that need to be moved. They're way too close to the grass. They're getting too much water. But I thought, oh, wouldn't it be beautiful to have some purple in here? Kind of curve it around in here. My word. Airplanes, heavy equipment, nail guns, you name it. Gosh, that's pretty just the three of them, isn't it? Maybe like so. Just a nice gentle drift of them through this space. 
Oh, pretty. I've also got some more over here we can take a look at quick. Right over here by the Hebe Fountain, denim and lace. And it looks really pretty in front of these Vanessa Bell roses. There's back and black sedum here. And I've got more on this side. Looks gorgeous with the reds too, doesn't it? Look at this. These are some of the new ones for next year. This is a new dahlia. All the dahlias that we've planted that are coming out next year that stay really compact are awesome. Highly recommend. Amazingly productive, gorgeous color. This is a kufia that I also highly recommend. This was my favorite kufia we planted even over the purple ones. I think that they've just been so productive and they look really pretty with this dahlia. And then peering up over the back of the kufia, we've got the unplugged red salvia and we've got unplugged white salvia, which is also a new one for next year. And this is all blank back here because remember we took out the sumacs which they're not coming up as bad as I thought they would. We haven't had to fight it all that much. I see a couple popping up. And I feel like that's probably what we'll deal with. Just here and there, pulling some out until we completely get rid of them. But yeah, the denim and lace looks really good in here. It's just a good plant. You guys, if you have an area with crummy soil, somewhere that's hot and sunny that you have a hard time getting maybe water to because once they're established, they don't need very much, uh, that's a really good plant to put in a situation like that. In fact, right now I'm not gonna even use any starter fertilizer. I'm just gonna plant them and water them in and that's it. There they are planted looking awesome. I think what I would like to do is possibly put some sort of a grass in here, like a taller grass, maybe a grouping. And then right in here, some sort of a, a weeping evergreen possibly. I don't know. This service berry, I can't remember how tall it gets, but it gets pretty good size and stays thin. And then we can start filling in with some smaller shrubs right in this area. I love it when I start to see areas come together or when I have the inspiration as to what needs to happen next, because there are some spots like this corner area that has nothing in it. We had a blue spruce there, but it wasn't centered properly. And it just wasn't the right look there. So we moved it into the dirt lands. And I just haven't landed on something that I love in terms of an idea for that space. So I'm just leaving it open. And that's kind of how this area was too. Sometimes it just takes planting some perennials right there and then just building around those to make it happen. So I'm really happy to see more things in this space. And you guys, that is gonna do it for today's projects. Lots of things in the ground. Those hydrangeas, I cannot wait to see the outcome of those. That's gonna be awesome. And then that whole chicken coop area after this year, it just needs a major, major refresh. I mean, the spider mites just decimated the plants and it's been a rough looking area to the point where I almost decided to just clear it out and start over. But I think we'll slowly rehab that space and start making it full and, and pretty again. <laughs> and seeing these Russian sage makes me want to just even keep putting more in. I mean, wouldn't it be beautiful to have a huge arc of them? That would be beautiful. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.